Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you three ways that you can use Simon Hurley's new solar paste. And then stick around towards the end because I'm also going to give you a bonus use for it. So we're looking at actually a total of four uses. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm so excited about these new solar paste. Already a rainbow of colors. We've got Royal Flush. We've got Cross My Heart, which is kind of a pinkish red. We've got Overheated. Wow. <laughs> uh, whoops, wrong one. We've got Golden Hour, which is a gold color. We've got Crocodile Tears. And we have Beluga. And trust me, as soon as I saw that, I got that Baby Beluga song stuck in my head for days. But I'm going to be showing you three ways to use this solar paste. So cool. Um, first of all, I want to talk about black paper. Because you can see there's a difference in the black papers. So the lightest one you see on the far right is Recollections. And that's from Michaels. And you're going to see that the solar paste lays down color differently on the color that you're laying it on. So on black, it's going to lay down the rainbow colors. The thing is, the darker black, the more vivid the rainbow. So I'm going to grab my paper towel and my little scraper tool here from Simon Hurley. And all I'm going to do is just lay these in, in rainbow order that I want. So I'm going purple, blue green, yellow, orange, pink. And I just use my little tool here. Let me zoom in here for you a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Maybe move everything up. <laughs> I got all kinds of protection going on here. Let's move everything so you can see it. I, I'm have, trying to get out of the bad habit of being out of, out of, out of frame. And I'm going to go ahead and use my media mat for this so my paper doesn't move around when I'm trying to scrape it. Um, you could just put a piece of tape on the back of it if you wanted. And I'm just taking a little bit and laying it down here on this scraper, wiping it off, and then going on to the next color. And you can see some, some when I get it on my mat, you can start to see the color in it. So on white, it just has a hue. And on colors, it picks up the color that it's on, kind of. Now, uh, Simon says you can mix this also. I haven't tried that yet, so that's another way you can do it. And I'm sure Simon will be showing that on his video. <laughs> but this is mine, and I didn't do that today. So now we're going in with the golden hour. I'm just trying to get it, you know, basically the width of the card, which is a four and a quarter cut right now. And each of the black pieces of paper are all cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And then the thicker that you put this on, the more pearlescent it is against your background. And you'll see that in a minute. And none of these are the technique. <laughs> this is just me kind of demonstrating the colors and how they look on black. Because we will be using black later on in the video. So there's my lightest color. There's my medium black. And here's my last black, which is the Tim Holtz um, Heavy Stock. So you can see they all kind of are different colors. And so we're going to go here with the first technique. And the first technique is to brayer the ink, I mean brayer the solar paste, onto a stamp. So I'm going to grab this Moroccan tile stamp. And I'm going to grab the darkest black. So as you can see, they're all different. But I want the darkest one, which is the... Um, the heavy black heavy stock from Ranger and Tim Holtz. And then I'm going to move uh, move my media mat, but I'm going to also peel the back off of this stamp so that it doesn't move around a bunch on me. And then I'm just going to put this solar paste right down onto my media mat and grab it with my brayer. Make sure it's on my brayer. And you got to work pretty fast here. And brayer it on, and then I'm just going to lay the card down right down into it. 
and just press it all around and there we have it. Now we'll set that aside to dry and we'll save that for our bonus content. So I have this little fingernail brush that's, you know, got a lot of black ink on it because this is all I do with it is clean stamps. Um, it's a soft brush, but it helps get that um, solar paste or any kind of goop, you know, if you're using lunar paste, solar paste, paint, whatever, helps get it out up out of the crevices there. So this is easy to clean. It just wipes up with water. And then um, if I had let it dry on my mat, it, it peels right up and easily. It's funny. It's not, not, not the same consistency as lunar paste. So here's technique two. Technique two is going to be through a stencil. And um, it's pretty easy to, oops. Well, sorry about that. It's pretty easy to put through a stencil just like any other type of medium like this. Uh, for this one, I'm going to use this snow stencil and I'm going to use a, mount, a mountain mask that I have. And what I'm doing here is masking off the bottom because I don't want to get snow on the very bottom and this this ends this came with a one of my purchases that I made last year so I'm going to be using the royal flush and I'm just pushing it through the stencil super super easy don't want it too thick so what we're creating here is snow and I would have done it on a snowflake stencil but all my snowflakes are put away so now I've let that dry and then I'm going to come back in with the same uh, royal flesh and I'm just going to use my finger tool to paint on my little hill here. And that's done. We'll put that aside to dry. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp out my little stamps here. And I have here the polar penguins. So yes, I know it's not Christmas time or even July, <laughs> but that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to grab the two, the little couple here, and I'm going to stamp them out, and then I'm going to heat emboss with, um, I'm going to stamp it in Burst Pine Clear, and then heat emboss it with clear embossing powder, and then I'm going to go ahead and watercolor those, and I will, um, I'm speeding up the watercolor process pretty fast, because it's not really the point of the video, but I didn't, I wanted to make sure I had finished cards for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to, and I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress watercolor paper for this. And I'm just going to put them down there in the corner because I don't want to waste, you know, a whole page of my watercolor if I don't have to. And I put a lot of any static powder and still, I still end up getting it on there, but, you know, <laughs> things happen. So going down with my Verse Fine Claire, I'm going to stab once and I don't push hard. I just give it a little push, but I do three times just to make sure I've got plenty of ink on there. And then I'll go ahead and pull it out of my Mini Misty and get that out of the way. Grab my clear embossing powder. Just throw it over them. And I'll tap off a little and I'll go ahead and heat emboss those. Make sure my heat tool is warmed up. And I want to make sure I don't miss any parts. And my head gets in the way a lot during my videos and I really do apologize for that but there's no way around it. I just can't see well enough. <laughs> I, I just got new glasses last year too but I don't know what it is. They get really foggy or something and I can't see so I have to get close to my work so I'm glad I'm grabbing my paintbrush and I'm going to start out with a little bit of breakup blue and a little bit of water so I'm going to just put some of that breakup blue down onto my media mat squirt some water I'm going to grab my watercolor brush and I'm going to wet, wet the middles of the little penguins. And here we go. This is the speeding up part. So I'm just doing a very light wash of color on these. And this is the color Shady. Um, I don't want to use pure black. And then I'll do their little beaks and that was with Roar. Now I'm going to use some stark white cardstock here. 
and I've got a sentiment that's from the kit as well. So it doesn't have to be necessarily a Christmas card. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the breakup blue and I'm just going to go ink to paper and spread it down on there just up on that top corner and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp with my verse fine Claire so that my sentiment is coordinating because I love chilling with you. <laughs> I'll get that out of my way and now we've got this I'm going to watercolor the background so the solar paste will resist the paint and I'm just doing a really light wash again of the breakup blue just to kind of give the sky you know like there's a little bit of sky there it's not just all white and it does help those little snowflakes to stand out as well and you can see as I move the paper, the changing of the color, because it's on white. It's a trip. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and dry that a, a bit. And then I'll trim it down. And I'm going to trim it down to uh, uh, three and three quarters by five. And then I'll be matting it. And I'll show you how I'm going to mat it. You could use a die if you wanted to, and I'm going to trim mostly the top part. I want a lot of my snow at the bottom and bottom third. So I'm going to go ahead and go ink to paper all the way around here. And then I'm going to cut my sentiment out of there so that I have this breakup blue again as a matte layer. So I'm just going to stab it with my scissors and carefully cut around the top part. So see, that's going to fit nicely on there and then I'll trim the other sides. So I'll go ahead and glue this down. And glue it to the top and left the way I want it and then I'll trim off the right and bottom. Do you see, do you see that color change on that solar paste? That's a trip. Uh, a little bit more. A little sliver more. Alright, there we go. There we go. So now we've got a nice matted layer. Now I'm going to find a white card base to put that on. And this is a top folding card base. And I'll go ahead and glue this straight down as well. So our card has a wee bit of dimension and it'll have some more dimension when I pop up the penguins and the sentiment. So I'm just going to use these little foam squares to pop up the penguins. A little feather stuck to that. I was playing with feathers the other night. You know how it is with feathers. Their, their little hairs end up everywhere. You know, if you trim them, <laughs> things go flying. Turkey feathers, I think they are. All right. I'm just going to set those like they're standing in the snow. And then I'm just going to fussy cut around this sentiment. Boom, there we go. Okay, I'm going to pop that up too. I'm going to use my scrapbook.com foam strips for that because they're nice and skinny, about an eighth inch, and I'll just trim a bit off, lay some on here, trim off the excess, and lay a little bit more and trim off the excess. Peel off the backer and put that back for next use. I'm just going to peel off the backer and set my sentiment down. I will embellish these all a little bit later. I'm going to go, I love chilling with you right there. Now we'll put that, see, do you see that? Look at that color change, it's crazy. <laughs> Alright, now this is a, um, oh, it's a third technique. And this technique is painting with it. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to stamp out this, the, the pair of birds from Spread Your Wings. And I'm just going to grab my mini Misty and let me see what paper I'm using. Okay, pull that stamp out. That's kind of a favorite stamp of mine. That's why it's so loved looking. <laughs> That's the one thing about photopolymer stamps is you love on them. Oh, I'm going to pull that last sentiment out that I didn't 
remember to pull out before and this for this I'm going to use the uh, uh, the Simon Hurley Stark White and <clears throat> place it in the top right corner of my Mini Misty and I'm going to place my stamp down now this is going to be a one layer card so um, I know that I'm going to be trimming some off I've got those little back thingies everywhere <laughs> and I'm going to again stamp this down with first fine clear it doesn't have to be perfect because I'll be stamping another layer so I just want to make sure that I've got a perfect outline so I have you know what I need to color and I'm going to go ahead and paint the birds and I'm also going to paint them with Simon Hurley ink. I'm going to paint the main birds, Tropical Tango. Their beaks are going to be, um, I want to say, over the moon. The branches will be Weeping Willow, and the leaves will be Fake Plant. So I'm just, you know, going in and just painting, you know, a couple of layers, adding a little bit of shading and such. Same way as always. Okay, there we go, and their little feet, then do their little branches, and then I'll get their little leaves, see what I mean? I have to get my head close to it so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'm coming in with the solar paste, and I'm painting the just the birds with the solar paste, and I'm sorry, my hair is just flat in the way there, but there they are painted with the solar paste. Now I'm going to stamp again a couple of times, and then I'm going to heat emboss. And um, keep in mind that I painted with the solar paste in the Crocodile Tears, but I also put a little bit of the uh, Royal Flush uh, over top of it. That's where you're seeing that little purple hue come in. So it's subtle, but it's there. And I'm just going to mess with it, try and get it to straighten out here. And I'm going to use my... Uh, my magic mushroom here and just kind of color in the background again with the breakup blue Now you can see that the um, solar paste resists the ink and I'm not too worried about the branches and the leaves it's really not going to come through because I'm doing a really light layer so to um, you know kind of remedy the fact that there's a couple of white spots I'm going to I'm going to get this wet <laughs> That, that'll, that'll just take right away so and then I'll go ahead and dry it and then we'll have to get it straightened out but once it's dry I'm also going to go around the edges and create a vignette with a you know a deeper second layer of the breakup blue just to kind of enhance those edges I, you know, I wish you could see the shimmer on these things in, uh, on camera as you can in real life. Oh, it's crazy. All right, here's our bonus technique. So I've got these ones that I tested out uh, earlier. And what I have here is I have some feathers from Gina K Designs. And I'm going to do some inlay. And I'm just trying to decide which one I like better. So I'm auditioning. And I think I like the one that's a little more solid. So that was our second, our medium black one. Um, and it's just more solid because I had more solar paste on my scraper. I'm going to go ahead and tape these down with some mint tape and I'm going to cut them out. And what I do is flip it over and take it over to my machine. I want to, I want the, um, I want the cut side up. So the cut side is up, right? But I brought the wrong thing over. So you just flip that over. No big deal. And now what I need to do is I need to make sure all my pieces stay in place so I can easily inlay them. So I'm going to grab my um, press and seal. And so there might be a better way to do this, but this is the one that I figured out for me. And I'm just going to cut a little piece out. And cutting this stuff out is the hardest part of the whole thing because <laughs> it wants to stick to your scissors and bunch up and stuff. So I'm just going to take a little piece. And I'm going to lay it down on where the die cut is, and I'm going to press really well and just push those dies into, right into that press and seal. 
I'm going to do that for the other leaf as well and then I'll flip it over and I'll show you how I do the other side then I'll do the rest off camera so you can make some cool colors and die cut them and depending on what you're die cutting be it flowers whatever can make some beautiful stuff all right got that nice and pressed in now I'm going to flip it over and I'll be able to pull out the um, pull the dies off and you do still want to pull them off carefully but see there we go this one may give me a hard time let me pull this tape off if it starts to give you a hard time and your pieces try to come up then use your pokey tool or a paintbrush or something like that to hold them down as you pull the die up so see I'm using my paintbrush to just make sure they stay down as I pull that die up and need a skinnier paintbrush for that one part nope still not skinny enough okay I'm gonna give in and use my pokey tool very carefully so I'm not using the pokey part of it I'm just using the side of the pokey part you want to make sure you get all those little parts too and now it should pull up perfect now there's one part I think that stayed it stayed in so I'm just gonna push them through the holes all right so I've got those all done now I'm gonna take another piece of press and seal because remember I still have some on the back and I'm gonna press it down on the front and then I'm just going to carefully pull off the back. Okay, and that just leaves them on the front. Then I'll use that second piece on this one. Just make sure everything's pressed down well. And then carefully pull this other piece off the back. Flip it over. And pull up my pieces. If they start to come up, just push them back down. So that one's ready to go. And we'll get this one. Man, I didn't realize I had so much gray hair. <laughs> All right. So now I just need to cut out the black. And so I'm going to go ahead and use the black heavy stock. And I'm going to use the piece that I colored in earlier. Um, it made a mess on. And all I need from that are the, the outside edges. So I'm not going to worry too much about everything. <laughs> so I'm going to just glue these down to this Moroccan tile background. And it's really hard to see them. So just keep in mind, if you're doing dark on dark, it's hard to see. <laughs> Especially with that pattern background. But you can do it. See, figure out which one goes where and you just kind of feel around for it to sort of slip into place let's see look for a matching part of your die and then I'm just gonna put glue on every single little piece here flip it over I'm gonna get one fitted and then just start to fit the rest of them and just sort of push them, move them around, manipulate them if you have to. You can, under the press and seal, they'll move until you get everything pressed into place. And then you're going to carefully pull off the press and seal. Ideally, you wait till it's dry, but, you know, I can't do that. So I lost one piece there. It's stuck to my press and seal. I'll put that back in with my tweezers. Just move this one around here a little bit. He's not quite in his little spot. There we go. And this itty bitty one. Yep, you were not going to see me putting that in there, but I did. And then here's the end of me putting in the second one. There we go. There I've got my two beautiful leaves inlaid onto that background that we did by using the brayer and the solar paste so I've added some sequins to some silver sequins to this one and uh, those are from this calls from for confetti they're just silver flat sequins or uh, confetti or whatever 
and then on the Moroccan tile one I've put the Simon Hurley essential sentiments foiled on there and some crystal balls from Trinity stamps so just a note and by the way I'll have everything listed down in the description box and then finally I use some pearls some um, pearls from Trinity stamps and the same sentiment love you so much that is foiled onto some black shiny cardstock so that's about it guys I hope that you know you learned some ways that you could use the solar paste in this video I really thank you so much for coming don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that notification bell if, and choose all if you want to catch all of my lives and all of my videos. Have a good one. Bye-bye.